Okay, we're looking at a Rainier tree on Gisela 5. This tree is going to be going into its fifth leaf this coming spring. It has been pruned lightly over the last couple of years. You can see what the response of the tree was. We've got just a lot of spurs and a lot of, of small wood throughout this tree. And so we need to be thinking about how do we start getting vigor back into this tree so that we can maintain good quality fruit, which is particularly important with varieties like Rainier where we've got to have good size in order to get the good money for it. We've got a couple of branches here that are competing with our leader. Now here is our leader right here, but you see we've got a branch right here that is almost as strong and almost as tall as the leader. We've got another branch right here. We've got, we've got very sharp angles on these and these two branches need to go. We need to, we need, need to eliminate them completely so that we don't have that competition with our main leader. So we're going to take that branch off there. We're going to come down here and we're going to take that branch off there as well. So we've eliminated a couple of the large branches that were competing with the, uh, with the leader, but we've also got a lot of little wood in here that is just shading out the lower growth, and that needs to be eliminated as well. We've got a very weak branch right here that needs to come out. We've got some branches over here that uh, are tending to be weak. Look at the number of spurs on this branch. If that, if that set fruit, this branch is going to be down here in, in June and July, and that's going to have all, all very weak wood on it. So we've got a couple of options. One, we can come back in here and we can just uh, head that so that we have uh, less potential for fruit on that branch. Uh, the other option is just to come back and, and take it off completely. Uh, either one uh, is, is probably okay and uh, there's probably nothing, uh, not a, a bad decision you can make there. The important thing is you've got to make a decision there, you just can't leave it. We've got some other small wood that needs to, that needs to come out here is an example of that. We've just got a lot of, of little wood in here and the point of taking this little wood out is that it leaves the stronger wood that is going to have uh, the potential of growing better quality cherries. So <clears throat> by taking off some of this, this small wood here again, we're allowing more light to come down into the lower portions of the tree. And it's this, this lower portion where we want to be growing most of our fruit. Because if, if I have a picker that is picking fruit, he's going to be able to double his productivity if he has both of his feet planted on the ground. Once I put that picker on a ladder, his production is going to be cut in half. And so I want to get the majority of my fruit down here below the seven, eight foot level where he can pick it off of the ground. And so I'm going to be very careful to make sure that these branches down here don't get shaded out. Okay, so far we've come through this tree and we've eliminated some of those branches that probably should have been taken out a couple of years ago. And so <clears throat> we have done some remedial pruning uh, in order to get this tree to the point where we're at right now. We talked earlier about uh, a four-step systematic process of pruning our trees. Uh, what we've done to this point is kind of uh, step A and now we're going to be moving on and looking at steps one, two, three, and four. So the first, the first thing we would do, our first step is to do some stub cutting. What we want to try to do is to eliminate the old spurs on this tree. We want to stimulate new wood to come in and uh, produce younger spurs because as we've, we've talked about before, our best quality fruit is going to be developed on young spurs and so we want to we want to keep very old spurs from developing so that means that I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make some stub cuts to eliminate some of these this the potential old spurs that that will be produced on this tree unless we start this process now I don't want spurs that are older than five years old which means that that what I want to do then is to eliminate about, uh, make stub cuts uh, on about 20% of my wood every year and that'll keep my 
uh, spurs young and productive. Now the other, the other point that I think it's important that we make is that we need to get light on this branch here where I've made this stub cut in order for new growth to, to develop. If I don't get light here, there's a potential that this, that this stub will die. And so you, when you make a cut like this, you need to look above it to make sure that it's not being shaded out. There's, there's clear sky above this, so there's a very likely chance that I will get two or three of these buds to break into new vegetative growth. The other thing that I need to be thinking about as I'm making stub cuts is that if I have um, a cut at the top of the tree, a stub cut at the top of the tree, I can go closer to the trunk than I can down here. Be just because of that, that uh, point that I just made, the fact that we, we've got to have light to, this, to this, uh, this cut in order to get new growth to develop from that point. Okay, that was step one to make these stub cuts. Step two now is to eliminate any weak or pendant wood because it's that weak wood, that pendant wood, that is going to overset where we're gonna have small, poor quality fruit. And so I wanna come through here and, and eliminate the, any wood that's hanging down. It's gonna be a problem on, uh, on Gisla trees in particular. Here I've got a branch down here. It's coming, it's hanging down. I've got some very weak wood. It's less than pencil size diameter back here. So that's gonna come off. Here I've got a branch that uh, should have been headed last year. It's coming out, it's very long, it's very weak. And even though it's upright, it needs to come off because it's just, it's just too weak. Got a branch hanging down, I'm gonna take that off. Got another branch going down here. And depending upon the variety, you will remove more or less of these branches. Uh, for example, if this is a, a sweetheart tree, I'm going to be taking off almost all of these small lateral branches. But if it's a Regina tree, a tree that does not uh, produce uh, very heavily, I'm going to leave more of them on. This happens to be a Rainier, it's kind of intermediate, and so I'm going to be leaving uh, some of these branches. It'll be, be uh, certainly uh, more than I would have left if this were a sweetheart tree, a variety that tends to produce very, very heavily.